What's up, wrestling fans, and welcome to uh, the 2016 Fast Lane Prediction Show here on the Joe Cronin Show. I am joined by my buddies Justin Bailey from the Best There Is podcast. Hello, and devious Dave Rose. Dave, Good evening and how, buenas noches. We are recovering from our monetize this fiasco of last night. Again, I apologize. I was obviously sick, but I'm not as sick anymore, so we should be okay here tonight. And uh, we're all in good spirits, I think, here. We're still drinking. We're still yeah, you gotta, Well, it's the day after. you got to keep drinking to keep it going. <laughs> um, well, all right. So, like they say, we bring it hard. That's right. We go hard. Yeah, I, I do want to mention, too, um, about something else real quick. Somebody mentioned I had to watch Table for Three because Ryback and Daniel Bryan and... Oh, and whatever God. was amazing. I listened to it. They really are. Ryback is really bothered by Daniel Bryan. And, and Dolph Ziggler and Daniel Bryan were kind of like snooty like brats to Ryback. And Ryback was kind of like oversensitive. It was really weird. Yeah, well, they fuck were Ryback. He's him. so much bigger. He could just tool both of them. The thing know. is, though, he is... He is um, Daniel Bryan was ribbing him, but it just seems to be that Ryback can't really take a joke too much or he's a little too sensitive, like Joe says. Yeah, so it's a combination yeah. of both things. Like, okay, a little too sensitive, and they're <laughs> they don't realize it or care. <laughs> That's funny you said that because I just watched like three or four of those the other day. Those are so fucking good. Yeah, what if you haven't seen that one? Watch that one. The Roddy Piper one with uh, Paul Orndorff and Gene Okerlund. That one's fucking great too. That was good. Now, um, I'm trying to pull the card up, but I'm actually having trouble navigating the fucking the new WWE website. It's mm. a fucking terrible website. I hate I hate what it is right now. It's it looks Kevin like Dunn did the layout. It looks like I made it. It looks like it looks like well it looks like all the websites now, like the, the make your own shopping website. And if you scroll down it never ends. Like if you just keep scrolling, like it doesn't end. It yeah, keeps especially reloading. When you try to go to superstars as opposed to last time where you could scroll through them quickly or go by by letter, now you have to go through the entire fucking roster al- oh. alphabetically. Really? It's mm. insanely stupid. I hate this site. Like I, I like the idea that they were sort of going to update it a little bit. It was a little bit I don't know, man, but yeah, this sucks. Was it that bad, though? Really? It, I didn't it think is. It was it, that it's, bad. It's that bad. But it, despite no, the old how one, the old shitty one. their no. site is, I have the card in front of me. I so think. Okay, there you go. Well, then that's good. We yeah, there, no, start with the, that. dude, their old one had a lot of information on it, but this one is just. It was easier to navigate. The that little, was the whole thing. They made it look like a tablet, but I'm on my PC, so I don't want to navigate like a tablet. Right. Okay. Fucking backwards thinking. Anyway, go ahead. Uh, we'll, we'll go here with our predictions of the 2016 Fast Lane. If you guys have any opinions, leave it in the comments below. <laughs> and then they run over Eva Marie. Downshift and U turn to get away from that fucking pay per view. I don't know. Now, man, the she's hot. I'm actually really pumped up about this. I got to say. Thank you, Joe. I in, am so glad you said that. Is that weird? No. I, when is. I did my review on Monday, I actually was very positive on my show. I was very optimistic for some of these matches, and I'll talk about them when we get into them. So, Dave? You must really love that Kool-Aid, but okay. So the show <laughs> will start at 7 p.m. However, that's just talk and bullshit. 8 o'clock is the pre-show, and the first match of the night is Callisto versus Alberto Del Rio in a two out of three falls match Mm. for the United States Championship. In a hope it never happens again match. Is it still on the pre-show? That, I believe, might be the case. It doesn't seem to... I haven't found anything yet that seems to be determined because they, they sometimes switch these things at the last moment. When I did my show on Monday, I was... When I read the card, it looked... It was... To what I saw, this match is going to be on the pre-show. Because I, I made a big rant about it because for some reason that six-man tag, which we'll talk about, made the main show. But this match is on the pre-show, and it's a fucking title bout. Well, um, in one way, I guess it's sort of uh, appropriate. Uh, you know, We can thank WWE for this because it really is such a lackluster match that it really doesn't deserve to be featured, even though you're, but it's a title. you're, bringing, up a, but you're bringing up a great point. That the fact it is a title match, yeah. but what has happened to the U.S. title since John Cena lost it? It's lost the prestige. I mean, we're going back to the point where Dean Ambrose held it for close to a year, 
hardly defended it, and it became just a fucking a, a, a wristwatch. It became something that was just so insignificant that nobody cared about it. So since Del Rio has unfortunately taken that title, and since he's joined the WWE, the whole run has been just pointless, and that that title that John Cena really worked hard to build its prestige has lost it entirely and now again is relegated to a pre-show match. Well, it's kind of fitting that we're talking about this match because Finn just puked all over the floor. Leo was holding up Finn, feeding him, and he just puked all <laughs> over the floor. Um, yeah, you know, this. I, I believe that honestly if you want to take this thing seriously after Cena building up this title, uh, that, that it should absolutely have been on the on the main card, not on the pre-show, because of the what they were supposedly have built with this title. And it's funny in that, as we talked about the table for three thing, in that table for three, Daniel Bryan and Ryback, they all talked about Dolph Ziggler. They talked about pumping up the uh, IC championship, the Intercontinental title, and how they were worried because the U.S. title was having such a good run with John Cena's whole, you know what I mean, um, challenge. And they were, and now it's like flip flopped, where the IC belt has gone to the level it should be at. I, I honestly believe, absolutely, that the IC belt should be above the United States title. Absolutely, this belt should be is the belt that gets you to the show. You know, this is the one. But the United States title should also have some validity as well. So to go from having too much validity, in my opinion, to having almost none now, it's back to literally reset time because of. Uh, Del Rio and uh, Kalisto, the, you know, I'm just, I don't know how it's going to get out of this. The only way to get it out of here is to get it off of these two guys or to have Rey Mysterio battle Kalisto for it. Okay, well, what I'm going to say uh, before I uh, give kind of my match prediction on what happens, I do want to say a couple of things, uh, especially my thoughts on the belt of the, US, the United States title itself. Uh, and WWE, like Joe said, the Intercontinental belt needs to be bigger than the U.S. title. It has to be because that's the point of that title because the Intercontinental title represents, like, the new upcomer, the guy that's supposed to make that run towards the big belt, right? That's what that title um, signifies. And um, the United States Championship, I kind of mirror it in uh, WCW because that was kind of the Intercontinental belt in WCW. And then the world television title was the United States belt on the WWE level. Yeah. So what they need to do is, is the United States belt now needs to become that world television title belt. Where like somebody the other day had mentioned, it needs to kind of be like the the invisible cruiserweight belt. People like Neville, you know, Kalisto and Sami Zayn and guys like that, they could make that belt a very like when the, when the show starts, kind of like back on WCW, the two kind of cruiserweights come out. But this time it'd be the two like United States title guys coming out there. You know, kind kind of give some prominence to that belt again, but uh, yeah. we could talk more and more about that. But I'm in agreement that in order for this belt to be taken serious, it needs to be on the main card, or yeah, the main card for the pay per view. My prediction for this match, though, is uh, Alberto Del Rio. I think it's going to be notched at one to one, and Del Rio is going to win it, uh, probably by crook. I think since Sin Cara's healed up, the Loser Dragons are going to go back to the tag team thing because it just looks weird with Kalisto wearing a United States title as Sin Cara's behind him. Yeah. Don't make sense. So I think I think Rio goes into Mania with the uh, United States title. I agree with that. I'll I'll just make my point short. I agree with that, and that's the reason why as well. I, I don't think that uh, it makes any sense when they're better as a tag team. He's been mm. better in his tag team than he has been with the United States title. I don't think Del Rio is going to do much better, but I agree. You know. And to cap it off, I will agree that Alberto Del Rio seems to be the one who's going to end up winning this match, not only for the points that you've raised, both of you, with Callisto being already part of a tag team that works well as a tag team. I don't, I'm don't. i not a fan of that tag team, but they work well together. When you look at Callisto when he's in a singles match, yeah, he does a couple of high-flying things, but guess what? I watch another show that has better stuff than that. So the fact is... He is just doing something that to me is just something that just comes with the territory. But I've seen so many botches from him that he's just not ready to, to be a star on his own. But as, he a, does botch as, a, ta a, lot. as a as a tag team partner, I think it works well. So I'll have to just say that Alberto Del Rio does come out probably dirty, winning this match, and goes into to WrestleMania with that title. Hopefully someone will take that title from him and give it again the prestige that it once had. 
So before you, before we move on, I just want to ask a real quick question on how he wins. Do you guys think that the, uh, um, the whatever they're called, the uh, nations or whatever it's called, uh, get involved? I would think so because they're going to have some involvement in WrestleMania, and that's how you get all those guys on the card, maybe too. What are they called again? United Nations or some shit? Yeah, League of Nations. League of Nations, that's right. I'm curious to think what Dave has to say about that, but I mean, I, I think they would. I think they would maybe get involved. The play with the League of Nations has been extremely weak. At yeah. one point, you had multiple champions within that group. It would have made sense if they, again, when a faction has all the titles, just like the Four Horsemen, you get something more. You get something that shines, something that even if they're all heels, people will be gravitated to and will want to just tune in to find out did those heels lose those titles yet? Because I don't like that. I mean, with the, with the New Day, it's different because of the way that they've been able to turn around the way that they've been booked and just get themselves over with the, the crowd because, you know, no matter how much they get buried by McMahon and, and company, yeah. they found a way to overcome that to the point where you can't deny those fucking merchandise sales. Sales, mm, so they're right. gonna fucking continue to do that. But again, you want to give a group proper prestige. You give them all the titles, and then you try to get all the heroes to take those titles back for the people. And you raise a good point too, because there's been a lot of uh, factions uh, in the past that have done that. You mentioned the Four Horsemen, and another one that I think most people realize uh, happened at one time was DX. You know, you had Triple H as the IC champion. Uh, Sean is the world heavyweight title. And then you have the uh, the smoking guns and the European title too. Oh, did X Pac have the European title? Great. No, Shawn Michaels yeah. had Shawn Michaels had the European title. That's right. He was double belting. I remember that. So yeah, that what um, DX they had the entire uh, trophy case for a while. So that was a great point. That in order to get a get a faction either heel or face over, you get them with all those belts, you know, and that gives them some prestige. So I didn't mean to get us too off topic. I just wanted to. See what you guys no, thought. that was perfect. I mean, I, I think you're right, and they should do it. They should do it that way. But you know, I don't. Well, that's another show altogether. Yeah, you're right. That Maybe is... we'll we'll talk yeah. about it tomorrow on State of the WWE. But well, let's get go. move on to the next match that is planned. Something that actually will probably be one of the highlights of the night. I'm actually thinking, Chris Jericho versus AJ Styles. Yeah, I can't. I can't wait. Well. I I uh, I kind of can't wait for that because I think he could, it could be a really good match. I think they're going to really try to put um, AJ Styles on the map here for anybody who doesn't know him and for the people that do know him, they can enjoy the match, obviously. So I'm pretty much looking forward to this thing because sometimes Jericho kind of mails it in on these other things, but this pay-per-view, this could be one where he, he does, you know, he comes back, kind of like in Japan when I he I forget who he wrestled, but I remember just Jericho was all over the place. I think it was night. Neville. It was uh, Neville. Yeah, go watch a, a Neville versus Jericho. It was awesome. I mean, probably was because how, how Neville is so quick and everything. But yeah, man, Jericho went was going all out. I hope he does that in this match. He hung in right there with him. Yeah, I, I, he did. No, he was going with Neville. He knew he'd had to. I think. But yeah. uh, with as far as this with um, with uh, AJ Styles and Chris Jericho. I think that obviously you got to give AJ Styles the win to to propel him here to WrestleMania. I agree with Joe. My points are very quick. I think it's an uh, easy AJ Styles win, or not easy, but I think it's an easy call that he wins it. And I, I agree with Joe as well that I think Jericho. I think this. I think he really cares about getting AJ Styles over more than he would other people. So I think he's really going to put on a, a really do. good match with AJ. I want to throw one more point in real quick, unless. Yeah. Unless they plan on taking Jericho and AJ to WrestleMania, if they plan on taking Jericho and AJ to WrestleMania, then you're going to see a Chris Jericho, you know, debauchery. Whether he gets himself counted out, gets himself disqualified, somehow decides to whatever something weird by Jericho to be a, a funny finish to propel them to right. WrestleMania, and that's so that if they're booking that way, I could see that happening, but. Looking at it, assuming that AJ's going on to somebody else, um, then yeah, obviously we think AJ's going to win as far as that goes, but uh, we'll see what Dave or anybody has to say about that. If that, ha if that happens, then it has to be Miz that interferes and makes um, AJ lose in a manner that would, would 
Actually, you know what? No, strike that. It doesn't make any goddamn sense. You know what? It, it sounds like that Justin has something to say. So before I fucking peel on this, uh, have your. Say. Oh no, you're fine. I I'll finish whenever you're done. That's okay. So she said. Okay, well I'll just go then. <laughs> um, no, I'm just gonna say that I don't think that this extends to WrestleMania. I think uh, Jericho just it, it ends in a flat out. AJ Styles win, and then AJ Styles. I'm still sticking to my guns. It's going to be KO and Styles at a WrestleMania. But again, I'm in, I'm in agreement with Joe that I think this is an AJ Styles win, and I do think that Jericho pulls all the stops out, and they have a really good match. Okay, my thoughts are that, yes, with both of you guys, Styles wins. We already know that Chris Jericho is a good worker, and he's always trying to make uh, talent better, put them over, and sort of induct them into the whole um, fine nuances of pro wrestling. We've seen it in the past. As long as he's, he still has the ability to wrestle, we're going to see it. He's going to be doing it. It'll probably be a really good match. He's put on some really good matches before, putting people over, even with people as like Fandango. Okay? Yeah. So I can really see a oh. good match coming out with this uh, particular one. Um, but in regards to what happens after this, because I always look to see what happens after. Where is it leading? What's the fucking story that they're trying to tell? Right. I do think that the, the Jericho feud is going to be done, and it looks like s somehow they're, gonna, they're definitely going to be bringing AJ into the WrestleMania picture. He will be on the card. Listen to oh, me yeah. now. Count it because it's going to happen. Yeah, I think Who's so. Who's it going to be against, though, is the big question. Somebody Justin tweeted Mitchell. me uh, Somebody tweeted me the other day real quick that uh, he, they think he's just going to be in this Memorial Battle Royal. I completely disagree. I, I am very confident that the, he's going to have a match on the card. He, this will be his WrestleMania match. I yeah. see it yeah. happening. They're not paying this guy all that money for nothing. So yeah. we're going to see something. Now, is it going to be Miz? I doubt it. No. Uh, I don't think that guy's ever going to get uh, another <laughs> WrestleMania chance, <laughs> you know, probably for the rest of his career, at least for a long time coming. It just seems that way. He's he's a jobber. That, that's what I they agree make him you, do. Yeah. You know, he could have more potential, but that's another issue. He so, is better than what people give him credit for. I will say that. But yes, he's, he's nowhere on the level of Styles and all these other guys. No. No, but the thing is, though, the question more remains in the fact that who's AJ Styles going to face, so potentially Owens. Uh, I would rather see Owens go against Sami Zayn, um, especially in WrestleMania. That would be a great premiere for Sami Zayn to resurrect that um, contention between the two. So when it comes to AJ Styles... Uh, WrestleMania, um, I'm going to have to leave that open for the for the next while. We're going to have to see what happens after uh, Fastlane in regards yep. to that. I agree. So we all think AJ is winning then? Yep. yep. It's Across a consensus. The board. Again. Right. Okay, so we all agree for the first two matches. The third match, uh, actually, you know what? Maybe I was wrong on the on what I just said. Maybe this match is going to be the highlight of the night. Kevin Owens versus Dolph Ziggler for the Intercontinental Championship. I know everybody's sick of this match, but it's um, this could be the one that we actually remember if they do it right. Um, yeah. The rest of them, maybe not so much, but this one is the one where, okay, they had all this build-up in matches, and we were angry at it. Um, are they going to do something that, that says, you know, oh, man, you know, this means something? Are we going to feel like it means something when we see these guys? Because sometimes when you see the match a lot, it builds to that one match that's epic, like back in the day. You know, um, the fun the funks, uh, you know, matches like that from back in tag matches back in the day and old old school wrestling matches where these guys just wrestled the hell out of each other. Then they had a, a war. And if these guys have that kind of war, then this is all worth it. And I'm going to, you know, applaud the whole thing. But if they end up basically just having a, a match to have another match and then it's over so that Kevin could can retain the title, which is probably what's going to happen, actually, but... Um, then I will be, I'll just kind of say, okay, here we go again. You know, just who's gonna, who's his opponent going to be at WrestleMania? So this is really for nothing other than to make sure they legitimize the champion who's already won it in a kind of it, almost a sort of weird way. So this is the one that legitimizes his uh, title reign now. 
Um, so obviously I think Kevin Owens wins, and that's about it. Yeah, I agree with you. I think it's uh, Kevin Owens uh, retain. Like I said, I really do uh, believe it's going to be Styles and KO for that title at Mania. But again, the Dolph and uh, KO match, I remember as soon as it was announced on Raw, I immediately went to Twitter because I knew I was going to see some very entertaining tweets from people. Everyone was really ass achy over this. Oh, my God, we're going to see it for the 13th time. And I just got straight to it, started tweeting to me. I'm sure you guys remember it. I was saying, look, if you guys are sick of it, this is the one you need to actually be optimistic about because I truly believe, I think, um, Dave, you had mentioned that you thought AJ and Chris was going to be kind of the dark horse match, and then you thought this one would be too. This is actually my dark horse pick. I think this is going to be the match, uh, if not the main event, that really people remember. Um, and I could be totally wrong. Like Joe said, this could just be another, oh, it's another Dolphin KO match. It's just on pay-per-view. But I don't think it will be um, for a couple of reasons. Uh, one of them being, uh, you know, people were getting very sick of it. I was too. But they really, even Stevens booked this match. You know, they had uh, Dolph KO won the first one, then Dolph won the next two, right? Mm, yeah. Well, well, then KO won the title in that big fi- Fatal Five way that Dolph was in. So now they're notched at two and two. But since Dolph won the two before, he got that title shot. And people were saying, well, the story doesn't make sense. That's why I brought that up. And I was like, now it makes perfect sense because now, now they're tied at two and two. So this is actually, you know, this is kind of your rubber match. Right. So, but again, I think it is a KO win, but I, this is my Dark Horse pick of the night. The, um, it's wow. That's a. Uh... So you're picking Kevin Owens. You're picking Dolph I'm picking, Ziggler. I'm picking Kevin Owens to win, and I actually think this will be the dark horse pick of the night uh, as far as match goes. Okay. To be the good match. Okay. I I, I don't. I wish. I I feel like they should be able to do that. They should have a good match because they really need to. Um. But I am worried that it won't be. And I'm worried with you too, Joe, because I mentioned before that this could just be another one. Yeah. But I'm also I I'm again I'm optimistic about this show and I think this could be the dark horse pick. Obviously the triple threat will be great, I'm assuming. But this is my dark horse pick for people people be like, Yeah, that was actually a really good match. That'd be awesome. I, I would absolutely I'd love that. If that's what happens, uh count me in as loving it. What is Dave what do you think, Dave? Definitely it's gonna be an Owens win. Dolph Ziggler is just there to I guess um be the fall guy because he doesn't Bump have like to a make, maniac. He doesn't have to make <laughs> Owens look good because Owens makes himself and everyone else around him look good. Right. I, I um, don't agree with you guys. I don't think this is going to be another one. I think this is the end of this fucking feud. I hope to God it is. No, no, no. This is the end. No, that's not, not what neither, we're saying. Neither one of us said that. Oh, okay, I thought I. We're saying it's not going to be compared to the same quality as yeah. just another one of the matches that they have on Raw. This is going to be. No, no, this is going to be a good match. I, I definitely see both of them do, really putting in a lot to get this match uh, over with the crowd and make right. it look good. The issue, though, is what happens in the future. I do not want to see Kevin Owens and AJ Styles in contention for the Intercontinental Championship. I want to see Sami Zayn. Okay, in this regard, I think that Owens is going to win it. I think that clearly Dolph Ziggler is just there to be another fall guy. I don't think, though, that Kevin Owens is going to be continuing this feud, and I think that he is going to face somebody else other than AJ Styles at WrestleMania. All right. But you don't, but you don't want it to be AJ Styles, too. You had mentioned that you wanted to see a Sami Zayn. I think it's possible, uh, provided proper booking, and again, that's a, an in, inconsequential issue, but provided proper booking, you could have Sami Zayn come in at WrestleMania and basically begin this uh, contention uh, directly for, uh, for that title. See, I don't, and we don't want to get too far off the tracks here, I just want to say that I don't think that's going to happen. I don't see Sami Zayn pull pulling double duty at uh, NXT Dallas and at uh, 32. I just don't see it. Well, I'd love to talk about that next week, or tomorrow, I should say, for the state of the WWE. Sure. So it looks like, again, we... Uh, Kevin Owens is going to win the match. I think uh, we all agree on that. We have a consensus now for all three matches, the first three matches. And now we're going to move on to the fourth match. 
This is uh, probably going to be the comedy of errors that we think it's going to be, and it requires that uh, Benny Hill song in the background <laughs> that uh, Joe played the other day on his show. It's going to be Ryback, Kane, and Big Show Ugh. versus the Wyatt family. It's time to put o- time to put over the Wyatts. Yes, that's what exactly what it is. I, there's it, to be. I don't mean to be a dick, but there's really no reason to discuss this match. I don't think. I think this is just an easy Wyatt win with three shitbirds um, at the other end of the ring. Actually, I would like to talk about this, and I'll I, tell you why. I think, this might the be the hardest, I think this might be the hardest one to predict so far, to be honest. Really? <laughs> I'm not joking. Like, I think it's, oh, uh, my God. You're serious. I'm, I'm joking. I am joking. Okay. <laughs> Better damn well be. No, but more importantly, here's the thing, though. <clears throat> I actually think there's a bigger part to play for the Wyatt family during Fast Lane. Oh, yeah. I really have a suspicion that they will be interfering during the the main event that we'll talk oh about my later. God. Well, that's not a suspicion. And we'll I bring think... that into the, I guess, WrestleMania card. But we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Dude, while. I, I, think every, I think there's been... I mean, we talked about it months ago that that would... Or a month ago that would happen. And everyone on Twitter is bringing it up now, too. I mean, we... You know, we... I think I said last month... Oh, that, we were right again? Oh, yeah, of course we were. I don't remember who... I know I said it, but I don't remember who else said what. You guys had your own things and said you agreed to it, but you came up with something about how they would attack Lesnar, and I said, yeah, they'd probably attack Lesnar. And that's how we would think that, you know, Lesnar would get out of it. And I could totally see, like, Brock Lesnar takes on the entire Wyatt family at WrestleMania. Oh, my God. I'm not even joking. Brock Lesnar versus the Wyatt. Let's Wyatt's. talk about this when we get to the yeah, 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 I'm going okay. to fucking so, rant. Okay, so no, no, no further discussion on this uh, forgettable match. Uh, just remember that this will probably be your piss break or your shit break. Um, although the next, shit match, breaks. Uh, the next match, as we once called it that, is no longer the case because we have Naomi and Tamina versus Sasha Banks and Becky Lynch. Yeah, this is where... Um, you know, basically, I got to believe that this is Tamina and Naomi, obviously, making sure to put over Sasha Banks and Becky Lynch, who should look really good in this tag team match. And then at the end of it, you may, hopefully, you'll see, you know, Sasha Banks will kind of waffle Becky or something That's like exactly that. That's exactly what I thought was going to happen. You've already summed up my thoughts. Yeah, so but they, then they're they're not happy with each other. Then they're both going to go after the title, and then we're going to get our triple threat at WrestleMania. So that's it. Um, I, I'm in the same boat as Joe. There's just a couple of different things I want to point out that I think will happen. I agree with him completely. This is um, just a match to get some steam behind Becky and Sasha uh, leading to Mania. So, yes, Naomi and Tamina are going to do the job for them. However, I don't believe the dissension starts uh, this night uh, at Fastlane. I think it happens the next night on Raw. Um, I or think, weeks yeah, like later. I said, I, what's that? Or maybe weeks later, because yeah, they could they could be like, oh, Sasha fa- finally came around on Becky, and then they hug. Then the next night on Raw, they're kind of nice, and then she turns the week after. Yeah, right. I, whatever. Yeah, I mean, because it's a really long build. I think it's like a six week build or some shit like that. Yeah. So again, I, I'm I'm thinking it's going to be the next night on Raw, maybe the week after, because you know Charlotte's going to want to integrate herself into the feud as well. So I'm just going to say, you know, Sasha and Becky, they get the win. Like Joe said, this, they're going to look really good, um, look really sexy too, and um, yeah. I think they're just going to get the steam put behind them, and I think it's going to be an easy win for them. And then, like Joe said, uh, here we go, triple threat headed towards Mania. Yeah. yeah. Always some sort of contention between the two, so we'll probably see that come to fruition at that point. You think you're going to be some blind way. tags and stuff, Dave? Like uh, kind of starting the dissension Showing between up, the two of them? It would be nice if they showed each other up with blind tags. It, I can kind of see that happening. I can see uh, – I can see Sasha Banks starting it and Becky Lynch basically saying, okay, fuck it, I'll, I'm going to continue, and, and them yeah. both doing that. They're going to come out with the win, but there's going to be some sort of contention at the end that will lead to what Joe is probably saying, which is a triple threat match, which is actually something I'm looking forward to. I would love to see a triple threat D- women's match. Oh, yeah. You know? uh, and uh, if, if Sasha gets the title, a lot of people are saying that she should do this, and I totally agree. You dump that fucking title in the garbage on TV, and you bring out your own fucking custom women's title. You get fired? You say, you're not a diva. You're the boss. 
the and Banks like, the Banks Championship, man. It looked like the million dollar belt, but it's oh. just like Sasha Banks. <laughs> That's genius. That'd be great. But let's move on to the next match, which okay. will obviously and clearly get some sort of involvement from the previous match we just mentioned, which is going to be Charlotte versus Brie Bella for the Divas Championship. They have to be careful here because even though Brie, you know, Brie isn't the greatest wrestler in there, but they really got to make Sasha look, I mean, Charlotte look very strong as the champion. So Brie Bella, what she does do well is uh, sometimes is take bumps, kind of like, like, Bumps off the side of the apron, going into the pole. Like, Bree's done a pretty good job of selling on these weirdly high-impact type of moves. So yeah. they, they should do a real good job of um, of putting over Charlotte and making her look strong. Maybe Bree doesn't want to quit, doesn't want to give up, and for a second you're believing that, oh, my goodness, maybe Bree will win. But then in the end, Charlotte, of course, does you know beat her. And I think that that's what, what will happen. I think that... Um... Joe mentioned something uh, really interesting about Brie Bella, and um, that is, I do think she's a solid worker in the ring, and I do think that Brie and Charlotte will put on a good match. An interesting fact, too, to remember is in 2015, you want to know who the WWE superstar uh, that wrestled the most matches that year was? Hmm. It was Brie Bella. What? And that blows people's minds when they hear that, but she wrestled the most matches in 2015 of any superstar on that roster. Anybody? So, of anybody. Not just women, anybody. I barely remember her wrestling on Raw. She, I mean, all live events and stuff like that, she was burning it up. That's crazy. So, the thing is, she's a really, really good worker. Make up for that Daniel I, Bryan payday. Yeah, I mean, she's, she was probably building up uh, for yeah. the retirement for the bed and breakfast. But, uh, um no, I think that Charlotte and Brie are going to put on a good match. As I do think Charlotte's probably going to win by crook. I really think that it would be nice for her to get a good, clean win, but they're still milking the tits out of that Daniel Bryan storyline. Yeah. So they're going to have Charlotte win by crook. Um, did you, who, Joe or Dave or somebody, who's, did someone say that they thought that they were, there would be some interference from the match before being the uh, Sasha Becky versus T- Tamina and Naomi? I don't think there will be. Um, okay, I was going to say, I didn't think so either. So I just want to confirm that I think Charlotte obviously retains this and uh, retains think, her title in this match and we go on. I think having Brie look strong in the match and uh, strong enough or like a sympathetic, like she's really giving it her all and then eventually losing is good enough for me. I don't think that Charlotte has to crook it out of her. Um, yeah. But that's just, uh, you know, how I feel about that. I think, um, man, that's about it. I'll let Dave go. Well, I think clearly Charlotte will win this one. I would love to see both of them really put on a good performance. Brie Bella will probably be retiring in the summer. So yeah. it would be nice at least to see her gain some sort of level. It sort of corresponds with the amount of work that she's put in because you guys are right. She's a hard worker. She's put in her time, and she's done a, a lot of good work. So whether or not they're sort of trying to utilize the Daniel Bryan retirement aspect or something else that she wants to start the family or do the bread and breakfast, uh, which I've got to say on a side note, I would fucking do because I think it's an awesome idea. I'd but be enraged then, if she won the title, though. Like, say at WrestleMania there was a four-way, I'd be very angry if Brie Bella won the championship. It it's kind of pointless at this point because we've got that will not happen. We, we we have what six months really to the point where she retires. It doesn't make sense for the stories, and it would really take away from those that are currently putting in their time for wrestling. So it would be great to see her go out on a high note. But in regards to this match, I still see Charlotte winning. You know, you you might be right. She might win dirty, but. You know, I just see her coming out of the uh, Charlotte coming out of this as the winner, where she will be going to face either Banks and or Lynch for the title. And another thing to add too, Dave, is there's a lot of people that think this is going to be Bree's last match at Fastlane. They think this was going to be. It. I know I've been hearing that and seeing that on Twitter and such. That's not going to happen. Uh, she's she's made too much money for the WWE. Her and her sister. She's going to get a big go home match, most likely, like you said, either SummerSlam. Or it could be as early as WrestleMania 32. Exactly. Bang. All right. 
Sorry, Joe. No, I just said bang. I do that. Like you All wanted right. to bang you in the bungalow. No, I, I saw <laughs> bang. No, I saw DDP. <laughs> DDP came on my screen and I was like, yeah. Bang. <laughs> Come on down to DDP. Oh, that's like, I can't do I can only do Stone Cold. I'll be honest, though. I'm actually <laughs> do it anyways. Of, it was great. Come that. on down. <laughs> I think I might buy the, the DDP uh, yoga DVD set and uh, give it a shot. Yeah. Hey, D if you do it naked and film yourself, they say that that, uh, that actually helps. <laughs> well, yes, do you say it. that or do they say that? Uh, well, uh, what's the next match? All right. <laughs> Apparently, there's been a leaked photo of WrestleMania. By the way, what do you mean? Wrestling Inc.'s reporting it could be fake, but it's a leaked photo. It looks fairly realistic, and the person really claims that it's of the logo or like the arena of Undertaker and Cena, and then on the top, Roman Reigns and Triple H. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's We'll discuss fantastic. that tomorrow. All right, yeah, we will. All right, so the final match of the night is... Be a great thumbnail. Dean Ambrose versus Brock Lesnar versus R R R R Roman Reigns for the number one contenders match for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, which they get to see in WrestleMania against <clears throat> Triple H. <sighs> so Fire I th away, uh, Joe. I'll tell you what. Um, months ago, I would have said. Obviously, weeks ago and months ago, I would have said Roman Re Reigns is going to win this and go to face Triple H because they have pushed Roman to the moon. He has gotten the most. You talking about Super Cena? He has gotten the super push of super pushes, um, and it's not Cena because he loses. But he, but he, no, he, he's be, he's given the super push of super pushes. Um, they've put everything as much as to bring Vince McMahon out to confront him to get um, in a confrontation with Roman Reigns. They've done literally everything you could possibly think of. And if it was all for nothing, then Roman Reigns won't be in this championship match. But it was if it was for something and they don't care what anyone thinks, they're going with their boy, then he's going. Now that was that was weeks ago and maybe a month ago that I thought that. Recently, it seems like Dean Ambrose has gotten the push that they're testing the waters more with him, teasing him at the Rumble being in their last. There's two ways to look at that. Did they put Dean in that moment because they wanted to keep Roman safe, that, which is what it seemed like at the time? But then at the same time, that intensity on Dean's face against Triple H, the crowd popping. Maybe WWE is like, maybe he is the guy we should use. And uh, he's really getting the push, almost like, you know, they've taken the Intercontinental title away from him. Um, and it just really reeks of Dean going to the main event now. However, WWE doesn't like you to know what's going to happen. So, in reality, is am, are we overthinking this now? Is it they're trying to make you believe that they're going to have Dean Ambrose go by pushing him and hiding Roman when really it sounds like Roman's going to win still again. So now I believe again that Roman Reigns is going to win and all this Dean Ambrose stuff is a distraction um, to make you think, wow, Dean's getting the push actually. And we haven't seen Roman Reigns at all. It's just like when a heel and a face are going at it and the heel beats the face up for 70% of the match. You don't see him do anything. And then all of a sudden he mounts a comeback and wins. It's just like that right now. Dean's in the limelight. Roman's kind of standing in the background. And I think Roman Reigns, for that reason, is could probably end up winning this thing. And if he does, then I'll be disgusted because they did do nothing with Roman Reigns in the last few weeks after all the pushing they've done with him. And then all of a sudden for Dean to go, I'll be happy as hell. I will absolutely have the biggest smile on my face if Dean Ambrose goes on to face Triple H. Mm. I would love to see Dean Ambrose versus Triple H at WrestleMania, but I think it's going to be Roman Reigns winning this match, unfortunately. Um, Joe made some uh, awesome points, a lot that are mirrored uh, by me. And um, one thing, well, a couple things that I want to say is I'm, I haven't been this stumped on a prediction in yeah. a while. Uh, I think the, uh, the, the, the one that I can think that kind of has me in the same way of thinking was like at SummerSlam last year when John Cena took on Rollins for both of the titles. I don't know if you guys remember that. It was for like the U.S. and the World Heavyweight title. Yeah. 
and it was it was weird to like think what direction they were going to go like was there going to be some weird way where they split the titles that's kind of where i'm at with this one like this was just so like to me unpredictable but at the same time like joe said what's to say that they don't just you the road we were on this whole time was getting roman reigns to wrestlemania and in the back of my mind it scares the shit out of me that that's what they're going to do however my prediction is for Dean Ambrose to go to WrestleMania 32 for many reasons that I've discussed uh, in other videos. Uh, one of them being that uh, Dean Ambrose and Triple H, I think Triple H felt something that night at the Royal Rumble. Yes. And when when Triple H was standing, it was one of the most epic moments I've got. I've yeah. Got I'm thinking about it right now. When Triple H was in one uh, side of the ring at, in the turnbuckle and Dean Ambrose was at the other side, and Dean Ambrose ripped his tank top off. Yeah. And it was just that moment, like, holy shit, you got goosebumps when you were watching it. And Triple H, and they had that stare off, and then they just went at each other, and the crowd went crazy. Don't think that Triple H doesn't know that what that feeling did. He wants that feeling at WrestleMania 32 because, guys, he does not want the match. That's going to be the laughing stock of WrestleMania 32. This is Triple H we're talking about. This is the yeah. guy that understands the smart fans. And no matter how much pull he has with Vince, I get that it's probably going to be Vince's call. But Triple H knows what the fans really want, and that's Dean Ambrose. And not just what the fans want, Triple H wants the feeling of excitement in that match like he felt at the Royal Rumble. So I, I could talk all day about this, and I'm sure we're going to talk about the Wyatt thing here in just a second. But my official prediction is indeed Dean Ambrose to win this match and go to WrestleMania 32 and give us all a really big swerve. Am I being optimistic as hell? Absolutely. But that's my prediction. I hope that's right. I hope that's what happens. <laughs> so we've got two now on call for but, Roman Reigns. No, no, no. no I uh, said Dean Ambrose. No, so Dean Ambrose. Gee, you're all fucked up tonight, Dave. You don't know what's going on. Um, but let me tell you. It's a long night. <laughs> long Night. This is the Last first night. time we've disagreed on something tonight. This is the first match in this whole entire review. And it's not for disagreeable purposes either. This is that's my legitimate prediction. And don't okay, think so don't think that Brock couldn't win this too, by the way, and that the Wyatts couldn't attack Roman Absolutely. and Dean. Now I've got to understand this. Joe says that Roman Reigns is gonna win. Justin Bailey says Dean Ambrose is gonna win. Is that correct? correct. That is correct. Okay. Well, I hope I'm wrong, though. Let me pull out my notes. <laughs> Please be here wrong. Because I think the odds are forever in uh, Joe's favor. <laughs> I hope not. I really hope it's Dean's. Well, See, it's, your heart I'll mark pick, out. Your heartfelt pick is Dean Ambrose. Yeah. But your smart, your smart fan pick is Roman Reigns because that's probably what they're going to do. Well, we'll see. We'll see, man. I, I hope not. What do you What do you think, Dave? Well, first of all, I think that Roman Reigns will come out as the winner. Second of all, I don't think that there's really any purpose for Dean Ambrose to be sort of in this sort of contention. I think it's just ruining his brand by being associated with Roman Reigns and this title contention. Keep that to fucking Triple H and Roman Reigns. Let Dean Ambrose get back into the IC title contention, although he totally deserves a, a heavyweight championship title run, because the problem is they're going to con continue and keep shoving Roman Reigns down our throat as a face and as a champion. And that is something that people just don't dig, but they don't listen to us. So they're going to make him... The you know the face well, they, they did want to they, make him the next Cena. They did with uh, Daniel Bryan. They did because they were forced to. That's the difference. There was so, but the problem is that right now, who else had that support that that Daniel Bryan did? Nobody. You might be able to find that once Seth Rollins comes back, because then most you don't think Dean Ambrose has um, at least half the steam that Daniel Bryan had. I'll agree that I'll, I'll agree to that, but I just don't think that he's the he's not the wrestler that the mothers who are bringing their eight year olds there to watch are saying. Look at that guy; he's a cool guy, you know. Uh, you know, they're more kind of scared of fucking Dean Ambrose. It's yeah, <laughs> no, that's it's, why I like him. But it's the comparable Follow factor to to Steve Austin, though. Where it's it's a different time. It's a different time, but uh, it's an awful time. 
what I'm saying is the fact that I just think that Roman Reigns is going to win because that's been their their blueprint from the beginning, and they have not altered from that no matter how much fucking hate that they've gotten, as opposed to all these other events, whether it be Strowman and Undertaker. Um, shit, there's so many different uh, events that I could mention that were changed at the last minute or changed because there was just so much outrage that people just... I have one, if you want me to... Just give it, give it, give quickly. it. That would be uh, Dean Ambrose getting stripped on Raw in that five-way. I don't think that was planned from the beginning at all. What do because you mean? all of the promo shots from Dean have him holding that Intercontinental Championship belt going into Fastlane. That's a good point. So to me, that is one factor. And maybe it's just me jumping the gun, but that's one factor. It was like, okay, we got, let's strip Dean Ambrose. It could either be because they're going to pull the trigger on him or people are too, uh, too predicting the fact that since he's got that belt that he's not going to win. It could be either or, but I don't think that that was a uh, planned thing. I think that was an on-the-fly thing that they just said, we got to do this now. So that's my only one thing. Anyways, now, go ahead. Now, let's talk about something that we really want to talk about is the fact that we we all seem to consider that the Wyatt family is going to Ugh, somehow Jesus involve Christ. themselves in this match so that Brock Lesnar has something to do during WrestleMania. What if nobody and, wins? And they just listen to what I just said. Yeah. Brock Lesnar has something to do at WrestleMania. I'm not saying he's going to give us a great performance. He always does. But it, the fact is... This WrestleMania is a fucking lackluster record. WrestleMania is supposed to be fucking. We don't know that though yet, though, Dave. Card, story, uh, intentions. I mean, you just have to look at that and see what well, what's the end result. What are we going to see on the Raw the day after? That's the big thing that nobody seems to look at fucking five minutes into the future as to well, what's the story telling us, and what are they trying to tell us with the wrestling? Um, so that we know what to expect, you know, in the next pay-per-view. I mean, it's insane that the the whole idea about creativity and storytelling has been thrown out the window for whatever we've got right now. Can I propose something that uh, people may not be thinking about? Uh, a DQ for everybody? Yeah, that's what I've been thinking about. So, well, what I'm thinking is, and it's, it, it's an absolute swerve, but I do think it's a possibility. And um, it's the fact that, Who's to say Brock Lesnar does not just win this match by fucking these two dudes up? <laughs> Who's to say that can't happen? Who's to say that Roman and Dean don't have dissension between the two each other, between each other, and just have a match at WrestleMania between the two of them? Yeah. Who's to say that doesn't happen? Why can't Brock just kick the shit out of these two guys and then the supposed biggest WrestleMania of all time? They have the biggest box office draw in MMA history in Brock Lesnar. Triple H, one of the most decorated world champions of all time, and against Brock Lesnar for the World Heavyweight Championship at WrestleMania 32. Now, that is a main event people would buy. The main, um, the, the explain WrestleMania. Explain to me what, what buildup of uh, storyline in regards to authority versus Brock Lesnar, who is. Oh, he's okay, totally I'll, give, off I'll their give you fucking... a couple. I'll give you a couple. One of them would have been the stare down that they had on, what was it, SmackDown? After it all wasn't happened. really a stare down. He's just returning okay. to the to a gorilla, and fucking Triple H comes out. He's like, "Look at me! I've got my fucking title." Okay. Well, how, ha, how about how about <laughs> on Raw when uh, fucking Lesnar waffled Roman Reigns with that table, and then F five Dean Ambrose, and they had their stare down on Raw. How about in the back when um, Triple H said, "It looks like Suplex City's getting kind of soft," and uh, Brock Lesnar patted him on the back and said, "I guess we'll find out at WrestleMania, won't we?" There's many, and again, they could just be using little tidbits to kind of swerve you a little bit, but it's not an impossible factor to headline the supposed biggest show in WrestleMania history with two of the biggest draws in, in WWE's history, not to mention MMA with Brock Lesnar. Well, what you're talking about more so is just the intelligent aspect of contingency plans when it comes to a company that always has more than one plan up their sleeve. WWE has always proven that, that when they've got an event, they may have four or five different outcomes that they could potentially put out if they need mm -hmm. to. I agree with so that. So they've got their intention, and then they've got their backup plans for whatever case might arise. So in this case, I think it's, it's something like that. It's, it's more of a, you know, you've got your contingency plans that you're just laying little seeds 
And you could always use that if you need to, but the main priority right now is to have Roman Reigns become the new John Cena and to be the face of the company and to please everyone, which is impossible. They can't have him do that. You know, mm. while we've been um, talking, I put up a poll a second ago that asked people who they think would win on Twitter. <laughs> And it's only up to 10 votes right now, but the votes, it's funny on this, I don't know if you know this, but every 30 seconds it refreshes, so you get, like, you can watch the polls live, it's cool, but uh, on Twitter. Um, and right now, Ambrose is winning 40% of the votes uh, for Ambrose, 30% to Reigns, 10% to Lesnar, and 20% said DQ no winner. Um, yeah. And I'm still, that point. still watching the votes come in, though. Do you think it's like... And I want to touch on something real quick, but I think uh, the odds are kind of like if you want to do kind of like Vegas-like odds or something, you could do like – it's like 50% Roman and then like 25 apiece for Dean and Brock as far as who comes out winning in my book. That's the way I feel. But the one thing I want to mention about the Wyatt family uh, interference, if that happens, I swear to God I'm going to fucking rage. And if Dean Ambrose wins, it's cool. I won't be as pissed. But even if they interfere in that match at all, I'm going to fucking rage. And I'm going to tell you why, because it makes no fucking sense. I don't care that Brock Lesnar was eliminated by these shitbirds at the Royal Rumble. Because you know what? They've been in the same building four fucking times now and not even so much as glanced at each other. Yeah. It makes no fucking sense. Brock and Paul have not mentioned them one time. Bray hasn't mentioned them one single time. They're fucking Toolbag and Ryback right now. There's no, it makes no fucking sense. But then all of a sudden be like, oh yeah, that's right. We don't like Brock again. No, no, I think it makes sense because if you were didn't like your friend and you're smart, you'd be like, well, I'm gonna wait till his he has his main event match and we're gonna fuck him up there. That, that, see, that still that does not make sense to me. If that was the case, the promos on Raw from Bray would be hinting towards they somebody are. they're hunting. Well, kind of are. They're saying that they're um, what are they saying? They're saying cryptic things like. Uh, They've been saying that for two years. Oh, I, I first of all, I hate the promos now. I've hated them for a year, over a year now, because it's all just bibble babble, nothing. Um, but they are saying they're going to take over the monsters and all of the people that you care about, and they've been saying kind of vague things like that, um, and the conquering the giants and, and the biggest. And who's one of the biggest giants in the WWE? It's Brock Lesnar. So I don't know, man. It's unfortunate they're trying to push Braun Strowman so much because he's not ready wrestling-wise. But to see Brock Lesnar take on that entire faction could probably lead to some really enjoyable results. Watch Brock Lesnar bury the entire Wyatt family instead of just Bray this year? No, I think that the the, the family could probably, you know, really uh, show their strength by beating him. But individually, if it was Brock Lesnar and Bray Wyatt, although they would have an amazing match, the proper winner should be Brock Lesnar. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. I've I've really stated all of my um, angles on this match as far as you know. I think there's a chance that Brock wins, that Dean wins, that Roman wins. I've I pretty much stated everything that I can state regarding this match. I'm interested, though, in Joe's uh, poll results. Have they fluctuated at all? I do see someone else's poll that um, theirs is, like, almost all in support of Dean. But um, as far as mine goes right now, it's at 17 votes now. Uh, 59% for Ambrose, 24 for Reigns, 6 for Lesnar, and 11 for no DQ. Or for do, no DQ. <laughs> for DQ, uh, DQ no winner. Yeah, so, but can I ask you guys? A, but more people say, think that there's going to be a DQ with no winner than Lesnar winning. And we can save this for State of the WWE if you want to, but what would exactly that entail um, if there was a DQ? Like, how how do you play that out throughout Raw? Does that just help build up to Mania, or like how do they how do they get out of that kind of um, debacle? I'm sorry, my the microphone the, stand the, just the, broke. The DQ, like, how do they, okay, it was a DQ, but where do they go from there? Do they just, like, you know, I'm confused as to how they figure out who gets the number one contendership going through Raw and all that. I mean, anybody? Dave? My mic's fucked up. Um, I think he said his mic's fucked I, up. I, 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 just, I don't see them doing that. I just don't. I, I don't either, Dave. too so. much more complication to the whole situation, so I just don't see a, a double uh, DQ or a triple DQ. 
DQ going down. Yeah. I don't see that so, either, but I, it's a possibility, you know? It's a very possible. I think it's a possibility. You, you sound a little... Is he distant. taking the trash out or something? No, my fucking... The there mic stand is. keeps coming unclipped from the wall, because I don't know why the fuck it keeps doing that, but it just keeps doing it. So now I'm just trying to hook it into my desk over here. I pretty no. much... To be honest with you guys, I've covered every angle that I can think of with this uh, particular match, especially the pay-per-view in general. I don't, is there anything else you guys have? Uh, actually, you know what? There is one more thing we need to talk about. Is there going to be a heel turn in this triple threat match? Uh, I don't if, think so. I mean, it would I would have anything. to say if if Dean Ambrose wins, which I don't see happening, but if Dean Ambrose wins, it only makes sense that yes, Roman Reigns turns heel at that point because he's been betrayed or he just wanted it that bad or maybe he decides to... That makes no um, sense. What do you mean it makes no sense? Oh, wait a minute. Yes, if Dean Ambrose wins, it makes perfect sense. What you're saying is absolutely That's what right. I'm saying. Yeah, if, if Dean Ambrose wins, which I don't believe, but if Dean Ambrose wins... If you, you don't think the Roman... Wins, I can't even fucking... Dan Ambrose. Well, wait a minute. You don't think that, all, that Reigns might not just say... Man, you got me, brother. You know, good luck. Go kick Triple H's ass. You know what I mean? And then, and then all of a sudden, Roman Reigns shows up at WrestleMania and screws Dean Ambrose is what I would expect for some reason. I don't see that. No. no. I, I can't agree with no, that. No, I actually see that this... We've got a month to set up for the contentions of WrestleMania 32 or whatever symbol they're fucking using. I, I, I actually... I, I call it WrestleMania spiky because the, the image is really spiky. All the, the graphics are spiky. So this is star uh, button. This is play WrestleMania star, Dallas star. No, no, I didn't see no star in the fucking yeah. logo. You look at the you, right. What are you, what are you fucking you, high? You fucking drugs. Yeah, it's the, it's the star right in the middle. <laughs> what's what's your, your point, Justin? What's your point, Justin? A what? The point is, there's a star in the middle of the logo. There's a fucking star in the name. That's my okay, goddamn point. The, well, the, the the one that they keep looking up at, I didn't see that in in fucking. Um, in it, the TV it show, blends but in. nonetheless. Okay, well, you know what? To Dave's credit, that is true. There is no star on the one hanging from the fucking ceiling. Really? All the, promo- all the promotional posters and shit. That's, That's a weird. spiky logo that I'm talking about. Yeah, it's very spiky, but... But I've, see- I've seen the... No, but the, the, the Dallas logo they released last year, because they, they released it basically, you know, um, a right year Right after ago. 32, or 31. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It had that fucking sort of a Dallas Star look. You know, it was white, it had the blue, you know. It's also I, got I, the Longhorns, too, Dave. Yeah, I remember seeing that, but not in the new logo. I mean, that's what I've been watching on fucking TV. Anyway, I, I think that if Dean Amber... What the fuck was that? Is that a beer? A gun? What was that? Damn right, son. There you go. Um, I think if Dean wins, it's an immediate heel turn by Reigns. I think it's an immediate heel turn. That's what by I Reigns. said. And, uh, and and so that that's all that's all I can really say on this match. I mean, we could the, fucking talk about this for another 2 hours, but we just got to wait till tomorrow. Um I don't know, that's uh, very interesting that we all really the whole show we pretty much all agreed exactly on. We didn't have any differentiation except for on that. There was a couple of things that on, we not the results. Not not in the predictions, the results, but in some of the ticky tacky shit in the matches. Yeah, we differed on, but as far as the predictions, yeah, Joe's right. We all were except right for there this. With each other. Dave, who is your who do you, so you think Dean's winning? No, no, I think Roman is winning. Okay, so you do think Roman's winning? Pick I don't know. Brock just for uh, differential purposes. <laughs> no, 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 but again, I just think that uh, Brock is going to be interfered with by oh my the God. Wine yeah. family. Yeah, I think they're going to try to carry the carry Brock Lesnar out of there. They're going to screw Brock Lesnar, and then basically what's going to happen is you're going to get Brock Lesnar versus the Wyatts at WrestleMania. I will finger bang my own fucking ass if that happens. I swear to God, I will fucking rage if that happens. It will come down to like Lesnar and fucking Wyatt or Lesnar and Strowman. Jesus Christ, shut your mouth! <laughs> I would hate that, but I just what else are you going to do? It's it's you know the good thing coming out of this show too is tomorrow's State of the WWE is going to be a fantastic show because there is so much stuff floating around right now for us to discuss, to discuss, and it relates to Fastlane and WrestleMania, so it's going to be a great fucking show. I almost wonder, though, like if we should release that because we'll have a predictions up, then we'll have State of the WWE up, or should we do State of the WWE for 
you know, like Tuesday no, or well, something? Well, the fact is we've discussed so much on this show that it, it leads also into the future, and that's the whole point of the state of the WWE. It's not talking just about what's going on right now, but where it's leading to. And that's the great thing because we can discuss what we've discussed tonight on that show and try to see if we can figure out what the fuck is going on with this promotion and what direction they're going in. I mean, we've obviously talked about stuff tonight that makes sense, but we know that they don't necessarily follow that form of logic. So what we're going to discuss tomorrow on fucking State of the WWE Ugh, state of the WWE <laughs> Roman is Reigns. going really to be great. Yeah, it will be great. And uh, But no, I just wish we could do a show Tuesday because I'll tell you, on Tuesday we're going to really know. Because Monday, I'll be sad that if you guys aren't there on the Raw review because I'll be, it will be like, man, everything will we'll have some sort of picture then. You know what I'm saying? Like So Tuesday. That's true. But um, anyway, that. let's wrap this fast lane up. Guys, everybody, thank you so much. <sighs> What the hell? You just blow your nose? No, oh, no, yeah. shift that, into, into that second was gear. To be oh. the, uh, the, the race car engine, but. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. <laughs> I don't know why I've decided to play this. I think it's funny. Uh, everybody click. What a motorboat, Ava Marie. Yeah. Click that like button and make sure to stick the thumb up my ass. Guys, can we get to 300 likes, please? Can we get 300 likes on this video? Can you guys share this video all over your Facebook pages, please? Share Do it like it an STD, baby. Get it out there. And you know what? Make sure you subscribe right here to the Joe Cronin Show. Thank you to Devious Dave Rose. And make sure to also subscribe to my buddy, Justin Bailey. The best there is podcast. Damn it, Broken look him up. Rant. YouTube. <laughs> Broken skull ass. Guys, uh, thanks for watching. Stay tuned tomorrow for State of the WWE. And, of course, live after WWE Fastlane, our review live. We'll be there. We'll, we'll see you then.